Hi friends. Today I am playing with uh, rocks. And I pulled out a lot of my older paintings um, and some of my tips and things I use. And it was actually quite fun to revisit that. So thank you for those of you asking me about painting rocks. Um, I'm kind of excited. You didn't actually ask me to paint rocks. You actually asked about painting maybe streams and uh, creeks and things like that. So as I'm working with how I will uh, show you that without having to make a, uh, I don't know, three hour tutorial, I thought I would at least share with you rocks for today. And I'm just sitting here, I'm drinking my latte, playing, looking through some of my old paintings. And um, I'm going to go ahead, I drew a few rocks here. And I'm just playing today on this very inexpensive paper I picked up. I'm not sure where I got it. I want to say it's probably Canson because it's some of the paper I used in my... Um, little workshops I did with kids and it was just a reasonable paper to let them play on and paint on. I've got my two containers of water here, one to wash my brush, one to rinse, and I've got my paper towel to damp, to get rid of the excess water. Today I'll also be using some tissue to create some of these organic uh, shapes on my rocks. And um, I think that's about it. As always, I'm using my Winsor Newton paints and I will link all the uh, supplies that I'm using in my tutorial right down below here. And today the colors I'm going to be using will be burnt umber, burnt sienna, maybe some gold ochre. Um, I might just dab in a tiny bit of the sap green, we'll see. I also really like this gold green, and I wanted to mention because I had one of you ask me um, about this gold green. I have a link in the description below. This is I use all Winsor Newton paints except for this color. This is a gold green and it's the Daniel Smith, which has a very, um, deep, it's a lot deeper, I want to use the word musky type. I don't think that's a description for a color, but it's much more smoky. Uh, the Winsor Newton gold green is a lot more yellowy green. So make sure if you're going to order that gold green and you want that deep, uh, dark color that I'm using here, that you use my link because it is, or you just make sure you're ordering the Daniel Smith gold green. There is a big difference. It's always interesting to me that across the different uh, manufacturers of paint, they can use some of the same um, type of descriptions, but they can be a little bit different. And especially just here's a, a little fact to keep, keep in mind. When I'm using, which my typical go-to brush has been a Princeton number six, a number six round in different brands can be completely different. So make sure that you're looking at your brushes when you're buying them. So the Prince, I use typically Princeton. Later, uh, just recently, I've been using these Degados, which I'm really liking. They were an inexpensive brush. Some of my brushes were getting a little funky at the ends and I thought I would just try these out and I've actually been very very happy with them they're quite firm they hold a lot of water I've been using them for about a month and they still have this beautiful beautiful tip on them which I'm kind of surprised for the price point I think it was $15 for a set 
and um, I still love my Princeton. I'm always going to predominantly use the Princeton. I just, I needed some new ones and these were very reasonable for me. So I picked them up. The link again will be in my uh, description down below. So let's get started. Um, what I'm going to be doing here for the most part is really using a wet in wet. And this is just going to be for the rocks. I will be coming up with a full tutorial on maybe a creek or something like that, but uh, I need to figure out how to break it down so that the tutorial isn't like two hours long for you all. Um, so let's get started with this. What I'm going to do first is, and I'm going to do a couple different techniques um, so let's start with this rock in the back and all I'm doing is laying down some water here. I don't necessarily want the puddles. I just want that beautiful shine and sheen that I always talk about. Just moving it around. So I've got this quite wet. Now keeping in mind, I'm using this student grade paper, so it seems to dry a lot quicker than I really would prefer with some in, in experience with my Arches paper that I love. So I've got that wet. Now I'm going to go into my, uh, let's see, I'm going to start with my burnt umber and starting with somewhat of a light value because as always we can go darker can't go backwards although i will be doing some lifting here so i've got that that uh, burnt umber and just touching in my rock here and there. So I've got a nice little wash there. I'm going to go ahead and rinse off my brush and now go into my darker brown here. And just touch in here and there to this. Just creating a little bit of interest something like that. I'm kind of assuming my light is coming from the top here and then I'm going to wash my brush, rinse it, and dry it off. So this is spreading here, which is exactly what I wanted. I'm going to let it dry just a bit because the technique I'm going to use for this needs it to be a little bit drier. Meanwhile, I'll go into this area right here and wet this rock as well. Go in again with that beautiful burnt umber and just touch in and let that spread and it's somewhat soft. And then just like I did here, I'll go in with that darker brown And normally I do tell you to use a little bit less water, but for this, you can use a little bit more water to get that real soft blend over your rocks. We're going to be adding in some details, which will make it feel a little bit more um, uh, not so soft because rocks aren't soft, right? They have some hard edges and we're going to be playing with that. Okay, so let's let this dry a little bit. I'm going to step away for two seconds and grab something to use in this with you all. Okay, I think um, in this picture here, I didn't use it, but it can be really fun as I was looking at some of my older um, paintings to 
use a little bit of salt. It gives this kind of fun effect. So this one, I'm going to be using some of that salt. Now, before this dries too much, I'm going to show you what I do here. I'm using a chopped up credit card. Now, as you know, I'm not a big fan of using a lot of, I don't know, uh, gimmicky type things, but this one is really fun and it comes up with such a beautiful effect. It's like, I have to use it in my rocks. So what you're gonna do is take your credit card and you're going to use the rounded corners and just start moving this around. Look at that already. And just creating these little white areas. Now, I found I had to kind of scrape it off, so look at that. Isn't that great? I mean, it's so easy. So there you go. You've got some really great shapes here. And now what you can do is now I will go in there and add, I'm going to use Payne's Gray. As you know, I love my Payne's Gray. It's a, it's really the only black I use unless I'm mixing my own black. And I'm just going to go in and kind of touch in here and there, kind of following what's already there. And that's sometimes what I love so much about watercolors is you can many times follow the paint, let the paint dictate. So there you go. I might go ahead and rinse my brush, dab it off, and use a little bit of this yellow ochre, which I see I didn't wash my brush enough, so you see what happens. So let me grab it straight off my palette. That's why it's so important to have your water clean. Because in this case, it wouldn't be disastrous but you want clean water. So I'm going to create a little puddle here and just tap in here and there. Just like that. And there you go. Isn't that a great rock? You can go back in with your little credit card if you want to do a little more, create some more something like that. Okay. Now let's go to this salt one. It's still a little bit wet. So you know what, let's, let's do this rock and let that dry a bit. I'm going to use again my burnt umber such a great rock color, isn't it? And just this time I didn't get this wet. I just am laying down a wash. So you can do it either way. And now I'll go in with my darker colors. Maybe we want to add a tiny bit of green because when I lived at the beach, there was always green algae type stuff on the rocks. And if you're around a creek, you're going to have a lot of that, right? And then I'm going to go into my burnt sienna. Let's water that down a bit. And create a little bit of that. Just really plain, okay? We'll let that dry. Now, meanwhile, let's see if we can work with this salt one here. Unfortunately, I don't know how to edit in fast forward. So let's see if we can get rid of some of that salt. Normally, I would let this dry a bit longer. So there you go. 
And also at the beach, there's a lot of striations in the rock. So I'm just gonna go into this and kind of add some of that here at the bottom. Just like that. Okay. Maybe while this is wet still, go in and add a little bit more of that because there's could be some shadows here on the bottom. There you go. So I would pretty much leave that rock just how it is. It's got that salt effect on it. And now let's go into this one. And all I'm gonna do is take my tissue and I'm just going to lift some paint off in random type of shapes, okay? So let's see what that does. So look at that. Isn't that wonderful? Now these are the easiest ways that I have learned over the years to do this. Now again, I've got these shapes left from the tissue that I can kind of follow their lead and just go in and follow around kind of these shadows and things that they created on their own. Might add a little bit of that Payne's Gray And again, this is so much the beauty of watercolors is you really can many times, I just follow what is already laid out for me with the watercolors. Another thing I might do on these and this is, I use this a lot whenever I was painting sand or rocks, I would use this technique. So. This is splattering. Let me get a tissue to cover the background here. And I'm just gonna splatter a little bit right here. So I'm gonna take my darker brown, actually my green gold, which honestly is completely different than the Windsor Newton green gold. It's Kind of surprising actually. Maybe add in the Payne's Gray, which turns a green gold anyway. And then I'm just going to kind of flick little spray on there. Let me create some more of that. So you can either use your Payne's Gray and Burnt Umber, or you can use the Green Gold. They're both basically the same. I'm going to do the same on here. Now this time I'm doing more of a splatter effect, which may be too much for you compared to if you use your finger it's a little finer it's a great um, technique for sand so i really didn't want to go outside of the rock so there you go almost stuck my brush in my latte which actually, because we're painting rocks, may not have been bad, right? Okay. Let's maybe do one more rock, because I think I'm pretty much done with all three. So this one, I used that credit card. This one, I used some salt and splattering. And this one, I used a tissue on all of them, I then went back in and just followed the shapes that were there for me. Thank you, watercolors. And kind of followed them. And look at that. 
I think it turned out beautiful. So there you go. I was maybe going to do one more, but I think this is enough. And I am putting together a tutorial on, um, you know, creating a stream with some rocks. Um, but I just trying to figure out how to do that, that it isn't, you know, a two hour long tutorial and uh, I don't have to rush through it. So play with these rocks. Um, and see what you think. I, I think they're really quite fun. And adding in some blue water in there, let's just, since it's here, might as well do that. So you can see how pretty these browns are with some water going between them. So I'm just wetting my paper. And then I'm going to pick up, oh, I don't know, let's play with the color here and make it really pretty. Let's play with this Prussian blue, ultramarine blue, make it really watery, and go in and lay that down. Now that was a little bright, so I'm going to But look how pretty that is with the brown of those rocks. Isn't that gorgeous? There's a little bit of a rock here that we could actually go in and paint. And then you could carry over some of that brown into the water. So let's just pick up a tiny bit of that, make it somewhat watery. And Kind of let it blend in there. Not pretty. Going to wash and rinse my brush, tap it off a bit, and look at how it's already blending in there. And this is kind of some of the basics I want to teach you in the tutorial I'm putting together. Maybe use a little bit of this Payne's Blue which is very deep and dark and gorgeous and mix it with some of that brown we just created and just go here at the base of these rocks like that. Wash and rinse my brush and bring that in to create a little bit of depth there. So I don't want to get too much into the water. That wasn't my really my intention here, but I always seem to do that, don't I? And there you go. All right, everybody, I hope you have fun with that. Um, I, I almost feel like I need to finish this for you, but we're already 23 minutes in. Um, so I think that was a good start to kind of playing with that. All right, everybody, I will link all of my um, supplies down below. I thank you so much for being here. I just love this little community that we're creating together. And you all, I can't tell you how many times I wake up in the morning and you make me feel like, what I absolutely love doing is bringing value to you and um, you really keep me inspired because I could be painting anyway, but knowing that what I'm sharing with you, you're enjoying and my slow methodical way of teaching because that's how I learn best um, resonates with some of you is just amazing. I'm, I am just so very grateful to have you here. And, um, I, I just really want to take a minute to thank you because I am new here and I am learning so much and I won an online course for beginners and trying to learn all these things. And you guys have just been more than gracious to me and my learning and my goofy little, mix-ups and things like that and I'm, I'm just really grateful so there you go have fun with this 
and uh, I can't wait to show you the full tutorial as I work on it. Happy painting and more than anything, enjoy this medium. That's what it's about. Enjoy it. I, I was a professional artist for years and I still like that part of it too, but this for me is just so fun painting with you guys and seeing your growth and it's just been more than fulfilling for me. So thank you everybody and I will see you soon. Happy painting.